Hello everyone and welcome back to Rise of Industry. I am Obi Van Dam and in this first part of my Alpha 5 tutorial we are going to take a deeper look into towns and AI behavior of those towns. We will investigate how the tech tree works in career mode and I will give you some advice on how to start your first career mode game and which path you might want to choose. Please keep in mind that all you see in this video is recorded with a pre-release press version of the game and will be slightly different than what you are going to play after the Steam launch. Not only that, but given that the game is still in alpha state, it is very likely that features you see will change and that some mechanics might work differently in future updates. Have fun, enjoy and I will see you in a second. When you start a new game in Rise of Industry, the first thing you need to do is find a location for you to start your company. For that, you need to take a look at the different towns on the map as well as the available resources. And the best way to do this is by pressing the tab key. This will show you all available resources as well as all the towns and the already existing shops. Later, it will also show you what your factories are currently producing by showing the product's name in brackets behind the factory name. When you click on a town hall, you will see the town's info panel. Here you can see some basic information about the town on the left side and the available shops on the right side. If you go to the region tab, you will see the available resources in this town's region and you can purchase a permit. The town type will determine the AI's behavior in that town. Depending on the type, the town will spawn different industries, buy different goods from other towns, have different chances to spawn certain shops and accept different types of buildings near its borders. There are currently four different types of towns. Rural towns that focus on farms and plantations, fishermen towns that will build fishing boats, industrial towns that focus on light industry like paper mills or textile factories, and finally, heavy industry that focuses on smelters and industry derived from that. Each town will be more tolerant in terms of influence penalty when you try to place a building that fits the town's preferences. So a rural town will tolerate a farm at their front door more than a smelter. The population of a town determines how many shops are available and how high the demand for the required goods are. In the current build, towns will start with two shops. One is a farmer's market and one is a hardware store, and it will spawn one additional shop for every 50,000 people living in it. Influence currently influences the price the town is willing to pay for a good. The higher the influence, the higher the price will be. Keep in mind that influence is just one factor that affects pricing in the new dynamic market implementation and will never be able to counter the negative effect on prices for flooding the market. More on that later. You gain influence by selling goods to a town and you lose influence when you place buildings too near to the town's center. If influence falls below zero, you will lose the ability to build in the town's region. There was already an announcement for a potential fifth specialization, which would be some kind of marketing or public relations spec that lets you change influence in other ways than currently possible. Together with that, I also expect a much deeper influence system than the current number between 0 and 100 that affects pricing. So stay tuned for a lot more to come in that area of the game. The prosperity indicates if the town is currently stagnating, growing, prospering or shrinking. If the town is not supplied with goods, it will be stagnating by default or shrink if it already has a certain size. To grow a town, you need to deliver goods to the shop. For each shop in the town that is supplied with at least one item, the town will grow by 1% at the end of the week. So if you want to grow a town, try to supply as many shops as possible, even if that means producing an item that might yield less income. The tech tree basically represents the brain of your company. Everything you can build and produce must be unlocked here, except maybe dirt roads, as everyone knows how to make those from the beginning. To unlock something, you need R&D or research points, as I call them. After selecting a specialization, you will be given three research points in your chosen spec and one point in each of the other three. To gain research points, you need to produce goods unlocked in the respective spec or, for logistics, spawn trucks, trains, boats or zeppelins. 
The irregular trucks sent from the dispatch slots are already enough to get research points for logistics. After you spend a number of research points on a category, you will master tier 1 of that category and unlock passive bonuses. Those bonuses are applied to all buildings in the given category, not only the buildings from that tier. When you spend more points, you will master tier 2 and 3 with better bonuses, which replace the previous ones. The bonuses include cheaper initial building costs, larger storage or increased production time, as well as a lot more depending on the category. There is one new hidden feature in Alpha 5 regarding the logistics buildings. While all production buildings start with one dispatch slot and can be upgraded to three with the additional dispatch slot tag, the logistics buildings start with three slots and can be upgraded to five with the additional dispatch slot tag. This includes the truck depot, the train terminal, the boat depot and the zeppelin field. The most notable change in the game in Alpha 5 is the dynamic economy. It basically means that prices are no longer static as it used to be, but are influenced by demand and supply and to some degree by the player's influence in the town where the good is sold. If you click on a shop in the town, you can see what products they want to buy and how many the town wants to buy per week. When you deliver a good to a shop, it will be put into storage and at the end of the week, the town will consume the weekly demand and you will be paid the current price. If there is not enough supply to fulfill the town's demand, the price for the respective good will go up, indicated by this green arrow over here. If there is more available than needed, the price will go down. This is indicated by a red arrow, like the one over here. Um, this is the reason that you can no longer flood the market with a single profitable good because you will destroy your own income and long term you will destroy your own company. The prices are not only affected by the things that happen in the town directly, but every transaction also affects the global market that you can open with the click to that icon. The global market works like the local market at the town, but the prices here are influenced but by all combined transactions on the map. The final part of the dynamic economy are events. There are bad events like this. Um, oh no, this is a good event. So for example, this old regulation lapse means that your upkeep will be decreased by 25%. There are also bad events like hurricanes, floods, blizzards, union strike and much more that will um, reduce your truck speed, increase your upkeep, reduce your um, your production rate at your factories and many many more. The system will make sure that there's no game like another one and that you constantly need to monitor what your factories are doing and potentially adapt to your environment. But that is something for you to discover on your own. Let me show you my currently favorite start in the game, which is the gatherer start. First of all, you press tab as always and try to look for a town that has fish nearby as well as some trees. And in the farmer's market buys apples and fish and in the hardware store buys cardboard and paper. Then you go to the tech tree, choose gathering and you unlock the water siphon to supply your orchard and your paper mill. Lumberyard, the Fisherman Pier, as I said, the Orchard, Industry, Paper Mill and the additional dispatch slot that we will need to supply our factories. After that, buy the permit and then you can start to set up your factories. First of all, we should try to set up the Fisherman Pier like this and you add two or maybe three nets. With this distance I recommend that it's only two because I don't think that um, the trucks from here will be able to um, deliver the, the input of three fishing nets. If the storage does not fill up you can add the third net as you would like. So and on the north we will add orchards. 
Let's place two of them because uh, Water Siphon is able to supply at least two of those in the beginning. Later, it's, it can support more. Let's do that. Place all the fields. Just like that. And then we will build a street to bring our goods back to town. And then add the Water Siphon. Try to find a location that has lots of um, double coastline tiles available so that you can place your pumps. Just like that. Connect all this with the street. The street will look a little bit odd, but that's okay. And then you choose the farms or your orchards from here. You can send a single truck to each, that should be enough given this short distance. And then over here, choose the farmer's market as well. And you have supplied the farmer's market with two goods already. So next up we have the paper mills with paper and cardboard. For that you need lumber. You can set up over here. Set up one lumber yard with two harvesters and set up a second one that just has a single harvester. I will show you why we do this in the second part of that tutorial. After that, you now we need the water siphon. You can place it somewhere around here. And we need two of those. One with a single pump and then a second one that has two pumps. Just like that. Connect all this with a street and we are ready to place our paper mills. Try to bring them as close as possible to the town without losing influence. Now this would be that area and place four of them. One will produce cardboard or two will produce cardboard. You send this to the hardware store. Second one, do the same thing. Destination, hardware store, and then for the paper, you can also send all this to the hardware store. Okay, now you choose the water siphon that has one pump, and you choose your cardboard factories to send this, and the one that has two you can choose your paper producing paper mills to do that. For the lumber yards, you do the opposite thing. The one that just has one woodcutter sends its stuff to paper. And the one with two sends the stuff to cardboard. And that's it. This is the initial gatherer setup that will supply two shops in this town. So you will have a 2% growth every single week. And you can expand from here in basically every direction because you will get research points in all areas. And also you will make the best use of all your six R&D points that you will get at the beginning because every single R&D point is used with that setup. So no R&D is wasted at the beginning. Plus, you are not dependent on the wholesaler because you have the option to unlock the water siphon, which you usually can't do if you want to go for the industry branch because you need the lumber yard to get your paper mills going. So you have the options to expand this real quickly by just adding this lumber yard, water siphon, paper mill setup multiple times, as well as supply additional orchards once you unlocked the additional bonus from the farming um, tech tree, this one, vineyard and orange fields. So you can just triple your orchard setup. And from the beginning, you should be able to triple this setup as well. And this will yield you enough money to build the company of your dream and do whatever you like. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the second part. Bye bye.